So, once they pulled that shit, I started doing my own things in Vegas nobody ever thought of doing. To keep an eye on things, I brought in my kid brother Dominic and some desperados from back home and started knocking over high rollers, casino bosses, bookmakers, anybody right here in town. I had a good fucking crew going for me, I'll tell you that. I had Sal Fusco, a great second story guy, Jack Hardy, he worked for a safe company before he did a six year bit. And then there was Bernie Blue. This guy could bypass any alarm for me. It was like old times. And I opened up my own jewelry store too, the Gold Rush. Sometimes I used to go along on the heist just for the fun of it. But I didn't like the people I was ripping off looking at me, so I used to turn their fucking pictures around. Take it so long over there. This Peter's a motherfucker. It's working. This keep working. It's you gotta learn how to open these fucking things so you don't have to take them. Frankie, some of these stones got a lot of niggers in them. Tell that fucking Peppy if he switches stones on us, he better take a fucking camel back to Nigeria. Yeah. And they're in Penthouse K. They checked in alone? They checked in alone. Are they out now? Yes. Don't worry. All right. Thanks. He had tipsters all over town. Bellman. This one looks good. But you got to hurry. Yeah, yeah, okay. Valet Parkers. We're just checking in now. Okay, I'll tell them. Pit bosses. We have room 12.30 at the Soraco. 12.30, right. Secretaries. In condition coins. In condition. All right. And they all got a piece of the score. The car's coming. They were very careful. They always bypass the alarms or else, if not, they drill enough holes to knock through the walls with a sledgehammer. Nicky was grabbing everything he could. Nobody out there was expecting a guy like him. To Nicky, Las Vegas was the fucking Wild West. I just got a shipment of diamonds from Israel. But what the fuck they expect from me? I had to earn, didn't I? You know, this diamond has flaws in it. No, 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 there's no flaws. Don't tell me I'm doing this for 25 years. You better clean your fucking loop, because there's no flaws <laughs> in this diamond. Yeah. You got cool. Whenever we got local merch, we'd usually send it to Palm Springs or Arizona, L.A. I had a couple of sand niggers out there. You know, Arabs. What, are you going to have a fucking meeting here? You're going to buy some dogs. I know his language. I'm talking about it. $40,000, you buy the whole package. One year thousand, and that's my final offer, and you are... All of a sudden, he talks English now. Let's talk turkey here. How about 25,000? I actually turned my bedroom into a bank vault where I kept the choice stuff. I couldn't leave it at the gold rush in case we got raided by the cops, or if my crew got cute. I had the only key. Jennifer didn't give a fuck. She used to fall asleep on the couch watching television every night. This stuff was all mine. I didn't send any of this back home. Actually, I couldn't because I wasn't even supposed to be doing it. The bosses were making so much fucking money with the casinos that they didn't want anybody making any waves for them. You all guys in your crew a piece of that? I took care of everybody. Yeah? That's why there was no real organized street stuff in Vegas before I came here. Yeah, that works out. But how much cash could I bury in my closet, right? Stan, I'm sure you do. That, that in a venture of this kind, you have to be prepared to take some kind of loss. So I put some of the money into legitimate deals with Charlie Clark. He was Ace's banker. I mean, you will try to push it through, won't you, Mr. Clark? Yes. I mean, you gotta understand, I'm giving you 50,000 cash. <laughs> then I put some more of the money in some legitimate places, like my restaurant. Is that the last one? Yeah. I had my kid brother Dominic run it for me. Yeah, Nicky loved restaurants. He was a real restaurant buff. And over the years, he always made money with it. In Vegas, he had the Leaning Tower. It was a very popular spot. He had politicians, showgirls, and movie stars hanging out all over the place. Listen, that show over the Flamingos is better and better. By the way, Sammy said whenever you have a minute, give him a call. Made a messenger out of you, too, huh? I'll do anything for a bug. He says it to everybody. Enjoy your dinner. Thanks. But I gotta tell you, the thing Nicky liked most was the showgirls, naturally. I mean, to them, Nicky was the movie star. You walk past me? Hey. This is Shelly. Hey, Shelly. Hey, how are you, Miss? And this is Stacy. Stacy? This is Nick. Having a pleasure. We're gonna have dinner tonight. All right, uh, let's check the kitchen first. Excuse us, one second. Come on, Chase. I fly stuff in fresh every day. I get bread from back home. I get fish from California. 
And you can always tell a great kitchen like ours because of the milk-fed veal. That's the secret. See, milk-fed veal is pure white. Out here, they got that pink veal. Slide over, honey. Now, pink veal, you can pound that shit for two days. It'll never, ever get tender, you know what I mean? I'm gonna lift it with the money. 